In this video, we're going to be looking at inverse functions. So in the previous video I made, we looked at composite functions. So one function being applied and then being followed up by another function. Okay. What we're looking at here is applying a function and then applying and getting f of x, something different. And then applying g of x, another function, that will allow us to get back to where we started from. Okay, so in other words, I'm putting x through two functions and then getting back to where I started. So in order to do this, g is then considered to be the inverse function of f. Okay, the function that inverts the process, that reverses the process of f. And in order to do that, we would we use the notation f to the minus 1, okay? So f to the minus 1 of x is the inverse function of f of x. Now, it's very common that students will get this confused um, because it's been decided that we use notation to the minus 1 here to represent an inverse function. We currently know if we put something to the power of minus 1, that means 1 over, it's a reciprocal. So it must be made clear that f to the minus 1 of x is not the same as 1 over f of x. Okay? That is not the case. So you need to keep this in your mind. Because if you're just thinking, well, um, let's say that f of x is uh, 2x plus 1, then f to the minus 1 of x is 1 over 2x plus 1. This is rubbish. Okay? That's completely wrong. So beware of this. So we have this inverse function notation. And let's say we want to find the inverse function of this. f of x is x plus 1 or squared plus 2. Now you should be able to recognise that that is a parabola. Okay? It's a parabola that has a vertex at minus 1, 2. Okay? So, first of all, let's say we want to find um, the inverse function. Okay, we want to find f to the minus 1 of x. Well, let's first think about this, okay? What we want to do is we want to reverse the process. So, first of all, if you start off with x, then I add 1 to it, okay? Then I square it, and then I add 2, okay? So this is the process that I currently run through when I put x into this. So I want to uh, reverse the process. So I need to start off, I get my x that I get at the end, this value, okay? And first of all, I would want to, so I put it in, and first of all, I'd want to take away 2, okay, because that's the first step process to reverse it, so I take away 2. I would then also want to, uh, to get from this stage to this stage, I'd have to square root, so I'm going to have to square root that side, okay. Now, we've got to be very clear that we're looking at a uh, positive square root in this case, because of this, this x is greater than or equal to 0, and that will become clear when we get around to sketching it. So I would, I'll keep all of the bits in, so we're going to square root next, and then I would have to take 1, because that's the final step. So this is the reverse process, okay? This is the inverse function, effectively. Now, obviously, on your exam for the core, um, you're not going to draw a load of arrows and go through these steps. I'm just showing the process. The, the actual step that uh, I would teach and I would employ here is to first think, 
Let's say y is equal to x plus 1 or squared plus 2. What we do then is we swap the x's and y's. So the y can become x, the x can become y, okay? And then what we want to do is we want to get this in terms of y, uh, sub, uh, make y the subject, sorry, so we get y equals. So we take 2 from both sides, we square root both sides, and then we take 1 from both sides. So it's then very clear that f to the minus 1 of x is root x minus 2 take away 1. Okay? Which is the same as what we got beforehand. Now, let's make this clearer by drawing a sketch. So we said that this was a parabola with vertex at minus 1, 2, okay, when x is, x is always greater than or equal to 0, so it's always on this side. So when x is 0, we get 3, and the parabola looks something like this, okay? So it's going through 3 on the y-axis. So here's my, the part of the parabola that exists. You should notice here that this graph is 1, 1, okay? Not many 1. Um, it is, must be very clear that you can only have the inverse function, uh, the in, find the inverse for a function if the function is 1, 1, okay? Because otherwise, well, I'll show you an example in a minute to explain why you can't have that. And if I sketch this, well, when y is 0, x would have to be 3, and this graph looks something like this. You'll notice that this one here is f of x, here is f to the minus 1 of x. They both go through 3, 3 on the y-axis, 3 on the x-axis. They both look similar in shape, they're just a reflection in the line y equals x. And you'll find that a function is the inverse are always a reflection in this line. Okay? That's coming through the fact that we swapped the x's and y's effectively. Okay? So you've got to be clear on that. Now I was going to show you an example of why we can't find the inverse of a many one function. Now Let's say we have a look at a very basic example of y equals x squared. Here is, it's a many one graph, because so I could just draw a line across and I would find that for a certain value of y I get, I have two values of x, okay? So, let's say I put in my value of x, I get a certain value of y, okay? No harm in that. It is a function after all, f of x is equal to x squared. Okay, I put in a value of x, I get out x squared. So I put in, let's say, 2, I get 4, okay? Perfectly fine. The problem is that if I then reverse the process, then f to the minus 1 of x example. Okay, reverse the process. I put in 4, so I'm here, and then, well, how do I figure out what my value of x was at the beginning? Because it could either have been 2, or it could have been minus 2. And there's no way of saying. And you can't have a function going from 1 point to 2 points. Okay, so you can't have that. In fact, a function from the very definition in one of our first videos was that you have one input, one output. You can't have putting, you can't have uh, one value going in and then us getting two values coming out. 
So we cannot have an inverse function for a many one graph. You have to restrict the domain. That's how we get to inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tan, etc. that you were using at higher GCSE. But it only comes from restricting the domain, and that comes later.